to experience a journey to a place of great importance. I'd like to introduce Level, Peter's Chicken. 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 Peter's
So we had a history of intermarrying. My, one of my grandfathers is Irish, by the way. And I know I don't look Irish. <laughs> but we're going to the pub when she turns 21. <laughs> so we're actually being the example without actually trying to be an example to the rest of our, our cousins and the neighboring uh, tribes out here. There's a lot of trauma in indigenous cultures, especially here in North Carolina. South Carolina came up, Virginia came down, and they all settled right here in the state. It's a lot of warfare that took place. Fast forward and into the future, we have a lot of trauma, a lot of distrust, and there's a lot of fragmentation. We're all over the place, as I was saying, we're all over the counties, all the way to Scotland County and beyond. And a lot of family don't know that they're actually family. We're discovering family through Ancestry, 23andMe, and all of these DNA companies. And it's like, wow, you're... I went to school at the right there near the boys' home with a lot of relatives. Didn't even know we were kids. So the Cape Fear Indians, you probably see signs on Dawson Street with Cape Fear Indians. <laughs> we have a cousin putting those signs up. He wants you to know that we're still here. So, you know, every so often the city takes them down here, put them right back up. <laughs> The Cape Fear Indians, uh, according to the history books, says that they fought against the Tuscarora. Here's the, here's the um, inside information on that. The Cape Fear Indians extended all the way down into Horry County. When you get into Horry County, that, that turns into Creek territory the Muscogee people. The Muscogee people were enemies of the Tuscarora. We, we covered such a, lot, a vast territory, Upper Wokan, Lower Wokan, which the river divided it. On the northern side is Upper Wokan, the lower side, Southern Wokan, I mean it's Lower Wokan. But all of it is considered Cape Fear Indians. We have many villages with funny names that the people back then just, it was too difficult to try to write all these different names with all these chiefs because each community had a chief. And they answered to a head chief. So they consolidated us under one name called Escape for Indians. It made it easier for them to write it and record it and to conduct business. Tuscarora and Wokan, in this area here, we were all called Cape Fear Indians. Many villages, Burgall, Winnebo, so on and so on. We are all over the place. During the war, some of the Cape Fear Indians did fight against the Tuscarora. These were the ones who were closer to the creek on, the, on that border. Because if you're, gonna, if you're living on that border, you have to understand, you're probably going to have a closer relationship with the folks down there. If I lived on the border next to Creek Indians, <laughs> and the Creek Confederacy was huge, the Amasi, um, and they also pulled a Catawba in that, so it was huge. So if I was living on that border, and they're telling me, you're going to fight with us if you're either with us or against us, then I'm probably going to be with you for a minute. So what happened, the Cape Fear Indians joined, Barnwell marched up to go fight the Tuscarora, but when they got up there, they turned around on the colonists and fought against the colonists. So there was a little civil war going on here and there within the tribes here picking and choosing sides. It was a hard life. And it's hard living the day and putting yourself in their shoes, saying, well, I would have done this and done that, but I wasn't living back there. It was rough. And you have to think about babies and the elders and so on. So it was a lot of difficult decisions made. But moving on from that, during the war, 1711. Yeah, make sure I understand we're talking the American we're, we're talking about the Tuscarora War. Okay, and before that, the yep. Tuscarora War. Okay. Yep. The Tuscarora War, 1711 to 1713, lasted a few years. And then after that, it turned into the Yamasi War when it went down into Allendale area there. So during that war, uh, it was rough. It was a rough war. They had a hard time defeating us, but the Indians who joined Barnwell made that possible. So we were defeated. And then a lot of us were removed to the Madame Mesquite Reservation up near... Um, going up near Virginia. On that reservation, we were sneaking off 
and still trying to fight, still trying to engage, still trying to get land back, still trying to capture some of our relatives who were taken into slavery. South Carolina got upset with us coming down there rescuing our people and said, if we catch any, of, any more of you down there, we're going to kill you on the spot. And because we were causing so much trouble, Virginia, North Carolina asked Virginia to come down here and just exterminate all of us, to exterminate us. So eventually a deal was made. Some of the Tuscarora families left and went to New York. And they signed a treaty and they were given a reservation. And those are your federal Tuscaroras up in Lewiston, New York. All the families here, they had to hide in the swamps, blend into black communities, blend into the white communities, or wherever you can fit in to survive. We have people with brown skin, light skin, and fair skin. You know, different funny looking eyes. All through uh, Columbus County, all the way back this way. They call that the Tuscarora Eye because we were so known for adopting people. Uh, this is my cousin Keith Harris. He's one of our council members. All right. The number of people, how often adoption was and the mixing and amalgamation was. A lot of that took place in North Carolina. So we're all mixed up. If you dig deep enough, I might be in your family tree. So you just don't know. I already told you I have an Irish granddad, so who knows? Cape Fear, that's where that comes from. Wokan, we already covered that a little bit. Wakama comes out of the name Wokan. When, when the tribe called Wakama was originally recorded, it was recorded by the Spanish in Georgetown as them being the tribe in Georgetown. And it's not spelled the way we see Wakama spelled today. It was spelled in Latin, so it looks almost like you're spelling Wakaya, G-U, G-U-A-C-A-Y, something like that. I don't have it in front of me, but it's something like that. And it's written, they were a part of the Kusabo province. That was the Creek side of us, so. So we have the Cape Fear Indians, I think we covered that. The Wokan, Upper Wokan, and Lower Wokan. Wokan were and still is a part of the Tuscarora Confederacy. The Tuscarora had a confederacy, which consisted of the Maharan, and I don't know if that's a state tribe in North Carolina, the Maharan. They're up in Ahoskie, North Carolina. The Nottaway, the Nottaway are in Virginia, and then us. So those three tri tribes formed the southern, the southern gate. When we migrated down for our ancient migration story, we came from the west out of Hopi land. So we have, a, we have a connection with the Mayans. We have a connection with the Hopi. Um, the elders out there speak about this. So my elders talk about this. So as we started to migrate, we went up towards Cahokia. Looks like a, looks like a um, you've seen the pyramids down in South America. That's what Cahokia looks like. So that was known that all your Iroquois people was there. Your Mohawk, Anadada, Anida, Tuscarora, but this is before we all had these individual names. We were just one people. So then we started to make a little curve and come back down. Before we made it into North Carolina, the Nottaway split off from us, and they stayed in, in uh, Virginia. As we traveled a little bit further, then the Meharan split off from us, and then us. Uh, so those three formed the Southern Gate. All right. Make sure I'm not getting ahead of myself. So I just I want to give you basically a background on who the Cape Fear band of Skurude and Wokan Indians are because there's so many names in there and it can be confusing. And we're not really talked about a lot. We have, because our history, we were enemies of the state in the 1700s. So a lot of folks had to leave. And after that, there was no more mention of us because we went, we disappeared into the swamps. So in the 70s, the community started coming back up in Robeson County with Chief Leon, Chief Elijah, Chief Hunt, and now you have Chief Hardison up in uh, Birdie County, letting everyone know, say, hey, we're still here. All the families did not leave. And the particular families down here, those are the Cape Fear Indians uh, uh, portion of our family. Those Tuscaroras down there on the lower Cape Fear. The Tuscarora has have a word called woka ani. If you take ani <coughs> off of that, you have wokan. 
Wakan Ane means children of the Tuscarora because the Wakan were permitted to live within the Tuscarora territory to hunt because they didn't really let other tribes in hunt in their territory unless you had some type of kinship. Moving forward, that's who we are. Today, we are extremely active. We're working with Mayor Mike Allen in Brunswick over in uh, Belleville. Uh, Ulysses Willis in Navassa, and uh, making our way through Brunswick, just letting folks know that we're here. We've been having our harvest gathering powwows since 2018 at Riverwalk Park, and this year is going to be huge because now the Intercultural Festival is partnering with us. So now we're going to have this organization that represents all the nations that's going to be participating with us at our harvest gathering. We've partnered recently with the organization out of India, Africa, the, the, the nonprofit or the organization is based out of um, India, but they're also connected in South Africa and Canada. And looks like we're going to have some answers for these forever chemicals in our water. Because I know all of us are subject to that. It's as far as Lake Wakama, they tested it in our gators down there. Don't know if you, you you all were aware of that. I want to bring, is it okay if I bring uh, Kevin up Please. for the revolutionary? Please. I want to bring my cousin Kevin up here. That was just a little snippet. Uh, it, it's really hard in a short period of time to tell our history and just consolidate it in just a small, because it's so vast. Um, and maybe another time or a different venue, or maybe at our harvest gathering, if you're able to come, you'll get to experience more of who we are and what we do and hear a lot more. But uh, Kevin is an expert dealing with the Revolutionary War and uh, as it pertains to our family. So I want to introduce you to come on up, man. Thanks for having us here today. Uh, my name is Kevin Graham. Sorry. Nice. A little congested a little bit. Yes, sir. Uh, like uh, the chief was saying, uh, uh, our history runs deep, not only in the United States, but also here in New England County. For anyone who actually lived here in Wilmington, you know of Freeman Beach, correct? Yes. Freeman Beach is, was named after our cousin, Cape Fear Indian. So our community stretched all throughout the banks of the Cape Fear River. I am actually, believe it or not, the past president of the Lord Cape Fear chapter of the Sons of the American Revolution. So if anyone, I mean, have you heard of the SAR? Yes. No. I was the past president. Our relatives dates back many generations in this country on the banks of the Cape Fear River that comes from the Atlantic Ocean, feed communities such as Leland, Nevada, Regalwood, East Arcadia, go up to Farmers Union, and eventually up to Penfield. Our relatives fought for the establishment of the United States. The only way you can actually get into the sons of the American Revolution or the daughters of the American Revolution is blood lineage. I actually personally descend from three veterans, Cape Indians, who fought to establish the United States of America. There's probably more, but like the chief was saying, the DNA, and I'm heavy into DNA also, DNA matching of relatives up in uh, the Tuscarora tribe, which is a federal recognized top tribe in New York, our DNA is matching those individuals. Our DNA is matching a lot of those tribes. We're cousins, we're cousins to the Coheries, the Wakama, and the rest of them. But the, the establishment of America would not exist solely by the fighting of, of a particular individuals. Our folks fought and died. One of my fourth great grandfather, his name was Zachariah Jacobs, lived on the Cape Fear, for the Continental Line. He was wounded twice the Battle of Gifford Courthouse. He was captured by the British. They told him to denounce the rebellion, or they, they were going to kill him. He escaped, 
and foreign war campaigns. The Battle of uh, uh, Briars Creek in, in Georgia. So, my thank you. My fourth great grandfather, fourth heir, uh, Cape Indian. Another one of my uh, fourth great grandfathers, his name was John Blanks. He fought for the Bladen County Militia. So, that Cape Fear River is very important uh, uh, to, our, to our people. Uh, so, once again, I'm not going to get into any of this all day, but if you have any questions, I'm here to answer them. Uh, my cousin, Luke Alexander, I got a cousin, Tyrell Gooden, May the 21st, on the, on the celebration of, of America 250, we'll be at the State Archive doing a presentation of persons of color in the American Revolutionary War. It's going to be an all-day event uh, sponsored by the, uh, the State Archives and some other organizations. So if you're available, it also will be Zoom as well. Okay? Uh, do any of the tribes have any written records that they wrote themselves? Or did the, okay. I, I would, uh, my name is Keith again, everyone. Um, I'm not finding, I'm sorry, let me turn around, let me run my mouth. Uh, what I began to find as I began to research my family, less of what they wrote, but how they came into North Carolina history and began to try to correct the, uh, the policies and, 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 and the things that were going against them. For but example, they did that in writing. They did that in writing. For and one were of they tried? I'm sorry, go ahead. Indians that did the writing? The uh, people I'm going to reference right now would be considered Kohari Indians. Uh, I trace back to what is now considered a Kohari Indian uh, through their Brewington line, actually mm -hmm. straight to their chief. Uh, I'm a, actually a descended nephew of their chief who, who progenitored that, that group. Mm -hmm. um, what I noticed in some of the documents that were going on around them, one particular relative uh, by the name of Goodwin, he worked with the, uh, the coroner to change the racial classification from one of his relatives, which was a Simmons, from black to Indian. Because she was born a mulatto, she began to be reclassified as a black. Mm -hmm. And then those people who identified themselves as eventually Kohari Indians made sure that she died an Indian woman. So when, when, when we we're looking for Indians to write their own records, it's going to be harder to find. But you'll, you'll find a lot of them trying to get into those positions of, of authority to correct some of those records. You know, it's a lot of, like the chief was saying, uh, absorb within the fabric of America in various communities. For example, I was saying my, uh, my fourth great grandfather, John Blanks, he was purchasing land in Bladen County as early as uh, 17, 1760, 1770. So I'm Abraham Freeman, my fifth great grandfather, was buying land in Bladen County in 1745. The land some that would be there. Body of government. Is already there. Yeah. Yeah. Some yeah. body of government recognize you. So you have situs, you know, so if you're trying to get land, is the federal government gives you any place to let's put it that way, or the state? Where do you stand as a Re an entity? The chief of this. Yes. We have actually opted out of the state and federal recognition. So just real quick, we joined a uh, confederacy. It's called the uh, FANA. That's the acronym. It stands for the Federation of Aboriginal Nations of the Americas. And we, two of the chiefs of the nations are actually lawyers for indigenous law. We decided we wanted to go international. So we were able to build those relationships with the Kingdom of Atui, Hawaii, the Confederated Tribes of Canada, and we have a chief in uh, Ghana that's uh, bringing telehealth, uh, water, and other things over there. So we're international right now. We opted out of state and federal, number one. Um, I, understand, <clears throat> I understand why tribes seek recognition because you live, some, some folks are living in impoverished conditions. Uh, Healthcare is an issue, um, education, and so on. So once you are able to get uh, a recognition of some sort, you're able to get certain grants and other things that are allocated towards people who have recognition. 
I understand when tribes seek those avenues to better themselves. With us, we, we stand on our treaties. Our treaties are with the British. Uh, we never ceded our land or treated with the U.S. So our treaties are still valid and binding with the British, which has allowed us to take the route that we've taken. And lastly, I want to thank all the veterans uh, for your sacrifice for the nation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.